Specs for what was previously being called the R9 4900X but is now being referred to as the R9 5900X just leaked out. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So as reported by the website WCCF Tech, a YouTube channel that goes by the name of PC Well just came out with some leaked information on the R9 5900X, which is based on the Zen 3 microarchitecture, which is also having a launch event here coming up really soon on October 8th. Now, if you want to go ahead and read the whole article and see the video, there will be links in the description below, though I will warn you, the video is in German, so you might actually end up having to be like me and go ahead and read the article over at WCCF Tech's website. So with all of that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this linked information break down whether or not I believe it's true and then after that I'm gonna go ahead and talk about whether or not this processor will be finally able to beat Intel in terms of gaming performance and then to wrap it all up I'm gonna tell you what I believe the price of this processor is gonna be so starting off with the basics according to this article it will be called the R9 5900X and not the 4900X and you know I've seen this all over the internet that supposedly it's no longer gonna be called the Ryzen 4000 series with the Ryzen 5000 series and apparently the reason for this being is that they want to line up the names with the mobile version and the desktop version because there will be new mobile processors coming out very soon so they want them to both be labeled as 5000 series and you know what that does make some sense but I'm not a hundred percent sold yet we'll have to see when they come out whether or not it will be the 5900X or the 4900X but in all reality that doesn't really matter too much what does matter is what's inside these processors so the 5900X will supposedly have 12 cores and 24 threads and it will apparently be the fastest processor at least on release and to me that makes sense because I believe last time around it did take a little bit of time to get the 16 core processor out. I've seen some people online claiming that there won't be anything bigger than a 12 core processor but in all reality that just doesn't make any sense because they're going to be using the same chiplet design. They're going to be apparently um, 8 core CCXs this time. I have been saying that for quite a while and that would make sense and so if you're going to have two 8 core CCXs on the top uh, chip why would you only sell a 12 core processor? There is gonna eventually be a 16 core processor. You can mark my words. I pretty much guarantee that. Now moving on to the IPC here, apparently the 5900X will see up to a 20% gain and later in the article, they actually reference Red Gaming Tech who states it's gonna be around 17%. So I'm not sure which it is and I'm not entirely sure whether or not they mean IPC or single threaded performance, but if they do mean IPC, that's a huge uplift. Though I am a little bit skeptical of that. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little bit closer to 10%. But moving on to the clock speed here, apparently the 5900X will see a 5 gigahertz boost, which is actually an 8% increase over the 3900X or 400 megahertz. Now, that 5 gigahertz boost is probably only going to be on one core, not all cores, but still, that's an impressive increase. And if we add that 8% to the low 17% IPC increase that's apparently going to be coming, well, that gets you a processor that's going to be 25% faster in single threaded performance. But you can't really take advantage of those IPC increases or that clock speed speed boost if you still have a bunch of latency and here I've heard personally that apparently these new processors are going to have an 8 core CCX design not a 4 core CCX design and they're also going to be working on the DRAM latency so if you get rid of the latency going from one quad core CCX to the other quad core CCX which it does have to go across the infinity fabric to do which of course increases latency and you reduce the latency to the DRAM well you'll actually be able to take advantage of that IPC and clock speed in terms of applications like games now moving Moving on to the TDP here, apparently it will be up to 150 watts this time, which is a 45 watt increase over the 3900X, 105 watts, which is actually a pretty big increase. But you know what? To hit that 5 gigahertz mark, if they really are trying to do that for marketing sake, uh, yeah, I could actually see that happening. And then apparently this will be manufactured on the 7 nanometer plus node, which, yeah, that sounds about right to me. Now here's where we talk about whether or not it can actually beat Intel. And so, According to Hardware and Box, the 10900K, when you uh, compare it to the 3900X, is actually only around 7.5% faster at 1080p, according to them, uh, on a 7-game average. Now, that's really not a whole lot. So even if this 25% increase is you know too high and it's it doesn't end up actually being true and you end up seeing somewhere around maybe a 15% increase on average, well, I would say that 
you know, if they do end up working on that latency to the DRAM, they do end up moving to that eight core CCX design, then yeah, even just a 15% or even a 10% increase would still have them beating Intel. So to me, it seems like almost no matter what AMD does, this generation of CPUs will end up beating the 10th generation of Intel processors on the market right now. Now, of course, later on this year, or I believe actually later on next year at this point, um, the 11th gen from Intel is going to be coming out. So at that point, will 11th gen end up dethroning the Ryzen 4000 slash 5000 chips? I'm not entirely sure, but I can tell you this. AMD is going to take the gaming crown. I pretty much guarantee it. But now let's go ahead and talk about the price. So the 3900X, if I'm remembering correctly, launched at $500. And at that price point, it did come with a cooler. And at that time for 12 cores, it was a really great deal. And even to this day, it's still not a bad deal, though you can find 3900X processors pretty frequently close to that $400 range, which is just an awesome deal. Now, where's the 5900X gonna land at? Well, I'm actually at this point expecting prices to go up slightly because remember if AMD takes the gaming crown and they have more cores than Intel well you, it, you running that company you'd be thinking to yourself I have a right to charge more now you're not going to like it as a consumer but I think they're going to try and go for a higher price. So at this point, I'm expecting them to come out of the gate with the 5900X at around $600. And for that price, I'm actually not entirely sure if you're going to get a cooler this time around because they're, they might push that angle of, okay, it's 150 watts now, TDP not 105 watts, so we don't want to give you a cooler. We think that you should really go out and buy one. I could definitely see them pushing that angle, especially since they launched the 3900XT without one. So... Um, yeah, you might be a little bit disappointed with the price. I wouldn't be surprised if you see it come in at 600 bucks with no cooler. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about the 5900X? Do you think these leaks are real? And what do you think the price point's gonna be? I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you wanna see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.